Okay, so the first thing I wanna do when I lay in my values, the, the main things I'm looking for is context and my limits. So my limits are gonna be my lightest light, probably right here, and my darkest dark, probably down here. And context is gonna be the background. Oftentimes the shadows will also be a really simple way that we can kind of put in some, some context. And the first thing I want to focus on, the first thing I focus on in general with watercolor is my lightest lights. And I just want to knock back that white of the page because that, it's, I don't want my brightest bright screaming at me. All of these values are so contextual and our perception of them is going to be so based on what's around those values. And so I'm just going to begin by laying in one big wash that kind of leaves out those lightest lights. And this is known as a ghost wash. And it's just a big one layer that kind of approximates the values that we will be using, although considerably lighter. And a lot of times they'll use softer edges with this ghost wash. I'm less interested in that. I don't care as much about that because all of these are big flat edges anyway on this on this painting, I'm, I don't have a lot of soft edges. I intentionally used sharp edges because it's an exercise in value and I don't want a lot of gradients right now. I want clear, flat, even values so that we can easily judge whether they're too dark or too light. And so right now, I'm just kind of I'm just gonna lay in a wash everywhere except these lightest lights. I kind of see a big white swath here. There's one here, there's a few here, there's some down here. So let's just lay those in. And I wanna get some of these in before their edges dry too quickly on me. Okay, so now that I have my ghost wash in, which helped establish my lightest lights, it helped solidify my drawing, at least in on some of these value shifts right here, right here, because these pencil lines are gonna get lost eventually. And it doesn't help me so much for these pencil marks, but it helps me for these. Uh, but most importantly, it kind of knocks back the white of the page. And if I were using color, it would give me an idea of the color ranges I'm working with. I probably should have maybe darkened some areas here, but they wouldn't be that dark anyway. And they're about to get pretty dark right now. And so my next move at this stage is my other limit, which is my darkest dark. And so I'm loading a lot of pigment onto my brush. And the values that you're putting down are a strict are strictly correlated to the amount of water and the amount of pigment in your brush. And so right now I have a lot of pigment and not a lot of water in here. And so my darkest dark is gonna be right about there. And so I might just mass in this whole shadow right here. And in general, people talk about watercolor going from moving from light to dark. And uh, that's one way to do it. I tend to, I, I guess I probably do that more or less, but I, I like to lay in my darkest dark pretty early. 
and you know it might get darker but in general I'm aiming to I want to make sure that the values I'm laying down are as accurate as possible because I don't want to have to come back and revisit them. I want to get these in as few brush strokes as possible, in as few layers as possible. One of the beauties of watercolor is its transparency, its translucency. And you can really see the path that the artist took. And if I'm doing layer after layer after layer, it really obscures that. And so I want to kind of exploit the the, the power of, of the kind of of watercolor to kind of show that that kind of path that we took and so in order to do that I need to lay down colors as accurately as possible in as few layers as possible and in order to do that I need my darkest dark to compare these values to the two most important things you can do for attaining accurate values are accurate value relationships, I should say, are your limits and context. And putting in this background is a really quick, easy way to get a lot of context. And the reason I paint all portraits like this, oil or watercolor or, or anything, graphite, or even not even just portraits, there are parts of the face that are gonna take a long time. And when I'm doing those parts of the face that are gonna take a long time, I wanna make sure that I'm working in the right value range and the right color range. And so if I'm gonna put a background in, you know, if I'm not leaving the background white, I wanna do it as early as possible. When I squint down, I'm not scrunching my eyes and scrunching my face so much. But what I am doing is I, I basically close my eyes all the way and then I open them just a sliver to let just the smallest amount of light in. Sometimes I, I imagine, or I, I, I use this example of, it's like, you're, it's like you're pretending you're asleep, but you wanna see what's happening in the room. And so you might just kind of crack your eyes open, just a sliver to see what that person is doing in the room, but you're still kind of pretending you're asleep and it looks like you're asleep. And when I do that, I look at my image I look at my reference and then I flash over to my image and I kind of, and as I'm squinting down, I want these value relationships to disappear at the same rate as they do on my reference. So I kind of ask myself, how quickly is that difference disappearing on my reference? And I want that difference to be disappearing at the same speed on my subject. Uh, another thing I might think is I want to when I'm squinting down, I kind of look for these large value patterns that are jumping out. When I squint down at my reference, I see a big light mass here, a, a light mass here, and a little bit here. And I want that same relationship, that same ratio to be jumping out at me. And squinting is, if I could boil this whole lesson down into one word, it would probably be squinting because it is just so crucial when it comes to values. And values are so crucial when it comes to describing volume and form in space. So when I squint down, it looks like the jump here is too small compared to the jump up there. It looks like this difference is more on the reference than it is here. And so I might lighten that a little. So I just, I might take a, I could take a paper towel. I could take a wet brush. I'm just gonna bring back some of that. I wanna be really careful. I don't wanna ruin the I don't want to work the page too much. I don't want to destroy that kind of fabric of the page. But I'm getting all the pigment out of my brush. And I'm just going on with water right now, just to lighten that value a little bit. And I want to work quick because I don't want any, I want a quick, a, a big even wash. And as, if this page starts to dry, then I'm not working wet into wet anymore. I'm working wet into damp and it's going to give a different effect. Once I've established my limits, my lightest light, my darkest dark, and my context, my background, I'm gonna jump in and paint my shadows. So my shadows are gonna be here, 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 and here. And so, again, I'm gonna to try to get those as accurate as I can right away. 
So the, the pigment I'm using is raw umber. And the reason I chose raw umber is because it's a non-staining pigment. I could have chose any non-staining pigment, but for this exercise, I'm gonna to wanna to be erasing a lot. Well, not erasing, but lifting up the values a little bit and laying down values and then and then changing. And then if, once they dry, I'm gonna to wanna to go lighter. And staining pigments don't really allow you to do that. They kind of stain the page. They'll even stain the metal pan. So when I lay down a pigment, I I kind of have this puddle on the page and I back up and I squint down, I compare to my darkest dark and I say, how does that puddle look? Does it need to get darker? Does it need to get lighter? And I get it exactly how I want it before, before that dries. Okay, so now I might put in some of my next, so now I could, I could really start anywhere as long as I'm comparing to my lightest light and my darkest dark. So my first move might be maybe I might put in my, I might start from the lights. So if this is my lightest light right here, this this one's gonna be just a hair lighter than that. But maybe I would start with right here. Oh, that's a little dark. So it's a little dark, so I'm gonna put more water on my brush, get rid of some of that pigment, just kind of have my brush full of water and just kind of wash that out. And again, I'm trying to get this as accurate as I can, and I'm not afraid to go too dark. Okay, so I put this puddle down. I might uh, squint down, compare that to some of my, some of its neighbors, compare it to my darkest dark. I think this part can go a little darker. I think this part can go a little darker. I think uh, this part shouldn't be there. Let's get that out of there, right here. I'm gonna take a damp part of the paper towel, not a dry part, and just clean up that edge a little bit. So I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna squint down and compare to, well, maybe I'll just bleed into this shape because this one's gonna be a little bit darker. And if I just kind of head into that now, I can, later I can go in and make this darker, but it might seem a little more unified if it's not one block up against the next block. And if I'm, in general, I'm not glazing. I am trying to get these as accurate as possible the first time, but in an instance like this, I don't, I don't really mind glazing too much. Squint down, compare this to its neighbors. Is this standing out less or more than than it should? It might be a little dark. I think it's gonna dry uh, lighter though, and I think we might be good with that. I think this could get pushed a little bit darker. Most of this piece can. And again, I will deal with those subforms later. You are welcome to kind of do this more piecemeal or work on these larger shapes first. Looks like this might want to get darker compared to this. Looks like it's going to be about the same value. If that's dry, I could probably head in and do that right now. And so I'm just kind of moving along, laying down these values. As they, as they start to dry, I'm backing up, squinting down, asking myself, are they too light or too dark? If they're too dark, I might take my paper towel and just kind of pull out certain parts of them. Like maybe I'll take out those darkest parts right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. I might clean up that edge a little bit up here. 
And as soon as I do that, I'm gonna to wanna to blot it. Otherwise, that, that water, that damp brush, the water from that damp brush is just gonna bleed back out into my lights. Is there anything on here? I squint down. How does that look? That still might be a little dark. Can I lighten it? I don't want to just lay a big wet puddle on it. So I'll, I'll kind of dip my brush in clean water. I'll wipe off the excess and now I'll just kind of soak up some of that pigment and I'll let the white of the page kind of shine through and make this value a little bit lighter. Uh, is there anything else? This seems a little light. Is it wet? Not anymore. It looks like I could do another wash over that. I only want to hit it if it's bone dry or if it's really wet. If it's damp, sometimes I'll end up working the page and it, it can just kind of lose that kind of freshness to it. tip that up a little bit just so that value ends up right here. That page is kind of buckling a little bit and I want the darkest part of the value to be right there. So I might hold it up while it dries a little bit. Squint down, flash back and forth. Is there anything else that's jumping out to me? Uh, maybe this can get pushed a little bit darker. Compared to its neighbors, it seems like right now it's, these two are about the same value. That's what I'm seeing on the reference. Seems like these two are about the same value, but on the reference, this is darker. Okay, that's, an, that's another opinion that's telling me, yeah, this probably is a little bit too light. So I'm gonna stop right here. That's a really brief introduction to values, value relationships, and um, best of luck.